Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Serrated Cucumber. One of my favourite things about Life is Strange as a video game series is the amount of choices and consequences we get to see. Life is Strange 2 is particularly prone to evidencing the weight and impact of our decisions. I mean, look at episode 3. It had over 16 separate variants for the endings as we recorded thus far, and there's likely a lot more. I love the choice and consequence mechanic so much. While playing the episode, it makes me so tense, and I love comparing my choices to other people and seeing what we did and why, and discussing which are the right choices. However, due to the nature of Life is Strange 2 as a video game and a narrative, it is very difficult to implement truly branching storylines. The overarching story of the game must strike the same plot points, such as Sean and Daniel being at the Reynolds in episode 2 to find Karen's letter, Sean working at the weed farm in episode 3 and failing the heist, causing him to lose his eye, and as for Daniel being taken to Haven Point, Daniel must must be taken there to learn the manipulative nature of some people and mature in both himself and his relationship with Sean. And this is fine, I recognise that it's hard to implement hundreds of branching stories, the episodes already take long enough sometimes. However, what if we suspended this rule that Life is Strange 2 must adhere to the same general plot? What if we imagine a world where the story had branched into a different direction, and where the story didn't have to follow these plot points, where it could diverge into something else entirely? So I bring you to a new conceptual series. I've entitled it What If, named after the original working title for Life is Strange Season 1, and I'll be exploring a different avenue of possibility every single episode. These will obviously be alongside my regular videos, I'm not just going to turn my entire channel into this, but I'll upload them for as long as people tend to enjoy them. Obviously there will be major plot spoilers for Life is Strange 2 in this video, as well as some potential references to the story of Life is Strange Season 1, Before the Storm, and the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. With that, let's get into this video. I asked you guys on Twitter which what if videos you'd like to see in a poll. I likely post one of these in the description of each of my videos, so don't worry if you see a video that you'd like to see and it hasn't been picked because chances are I'll get through all of these at some point. This time, winning with 40% of the overall votes was the video titled What if Sean had the power instead of Daniel? And so that's what we'll be discussing in this episode. So without further ado, what would have happened? Remember that this is all my opinion and interpretations of the characters. So let's set the scene. Sean and Daniel are on the ground outside their house, Officer Kindred Matthews pointing his gun at Esteban in the escalation and inevitably shooting him. Upon Esteban hitting the floor, Sean would feel an intense heat spread throughout his body, the feeling of a power awakening inside of him, and Officer Matthews would still be thrown across the street as Sean would let out a cry of anguish. Due to Sean being older and likely able to bear the impact of a power outburst better than Daniel can, it is unlikely that Sean would pass out as his younger brother did in the original story. He would feel a sense of dread being confused and panic stricken looking at the corpses of Esteban and the officer laying before him, as well as a highly confused hysterical Daniel who would be unable to form words, stumbling and muttering with tears falling from his eyes as he desperately tries to cling to his father's body. Sean would likely still be panicked enough to run away with Daniel, who would be way too shocked and stunned to protest. The story would continue as normal, with Sean having absolutely no idea what happened. The boys would talk about what happened with Esteban and agree to to the Puerto Lobos plan. They'd venture to the Outlook where he and Sean, instead of making light-hearted jokes about the moon, would cry together and talk about how Esteban would take them on trips like this. Daniel would share Sean's heartache and the two of them would try to figure out what the hell happened to the police officer. Sean would be apprehensive, not wanting to talk about it too much, because of what he felt when the incident happened, and how he believes he may be connected to the power. The next day, at the gas station, would be where things begin to turn. Sean would approach the mini mart and purchase some food for him and Daniel, where he would meet Brody and Doris. After Hank Stamper arriving back at the gas station, he would confront Sean and Daniel for what he saw in the news. Hank would try to detain them as normal, but instead of him being able to grab and knock Sean over, Sean Powers would unexpectedly surface as he is grabbed, with Hank being thrown back about 10 feet onto his back. Sean would again be entirely perplexed, but would begin to understand things a little better, and realise that these unexpected outbursts might have supernatural links. It is here that Sean would run away southwards into the woods with Daniel, abandoning Hank. The two would sleep in the rain that night unless they managed to steal from the gas station. Brody would never have come to their aid as he wouldn't have seen the commotion. Mushroom would never have been taken in by the brothers. Sean and Daniel would walk the journey towards Oregon with what money and possessions they have. They would spend a chilly night being soaked as they take shelter under a tree, Sean using his hoodie as a blanket for Daniel and talking with his younger brother about the implications of his power. Gradually, 
Sean would get Daniel to test the power by drawing out negative emotions and trying to lift things until gradually, he manages to shift leaves and branches with the power. Given his obsession with Daniel's power in the main story, it is likely he would train a lot, feeling an amazing sense of strength from this gift. The same could not be said, however, of his younger brother, who would begin to become jealous of his older brother's gift and wonder why he can't do these things. While he would be impressed by Sean's powers at the beginning, later, it would become the equivalent of Petunia and Lily Evans from Harry Potter. Daniel would begin to resent the power as the boys moved southwards, criticising Sean for moving it constantly or even belittling him for it, branding him as a freak or a monster. I like to think this would manifest itself in Sean using the power to pack his bags or to pluck berries from brushes far away, and this would aggravate Daniel. He would become similar to his episode 3 stealth, but instead of being a whiny child with a god complex, beginning just be a whiny child. Their relationship would become slightly strained because of the imbalance of power. In the original story, Daniel lays claim to his power and autonomy due to him possessing the gift to be more powerful than any man or woman alive, but here, Daniel would be forced to obey Sean's orders, as not only is he the adult, but he also holds the powers. Sean would never learn episode 3's lesson of letting Daniel become his own person. As for the journey, they would move significantly slower through South Washington and Oregon, and due to the intense winter climate, the boy's lack of money and possessions from Brody, or the gas station, one of the two would eventually find themselves to become unwell still. If we are to believe that the power is part of the reason Daniel fell ill in episode 2, Sean would probably be the one to get sick this time. He would try to fight off the sickness, but due to their homeless status, the lack of medicine, Sean would find himself once again going to the Reynolds home with Daniel. They would question him on the murder of Officer Matthews and business as usual would ensue at the Reynolds. However, the Diaz brothers would have arrived at the Reynolds possibly a few days or weeks later this time around, since they didn't have the opportunity to travel in Brody's car, and Brody did not buy bus tickets for them to bypass the entirety of North Oregon. This would see Sean and Daniel arriving later, disrupting a crucial chain of events. Let me explain. Sean and Daniel would not have been outside, attempting to unlock the shed on the Saturday during which Chris Erickson falls from his treehouse. Therefore, Sean would not be able to save Chris with his power, meaning that Chris Erickson would be injured from his fall and would likely be inside. Due to Claire's possessive nature, she likely would not have let them go to visit Chris otherwise, meaning that Sean and Daniel would never have been convinced to go to the Christmas market, ensuring they never would have met Cassidy and Finn, the drifters who set up the entire premise of episode 3, thus never teaching Sean about train hopping. The Wolf Brothers would have stayed with Claire and Stephen for quite a while longer. Sean and Daniel would have had an increasingly strained relationship at this point due to the jealousy that Daniel feels towards Sean, who would have continually snuck away to practice his powers in secret. Daniel would likely forget the gravity of the situation and threaten Sean that he would tell Claire and Stephen about the powers, which Sean would adamantly try to hide. Eventually, there would be an inciting event, which means they must leave their grandparents. I imagine that after so long of feeling trapped in their grandparents and having no friends, becoming bored over the months of no Minecraft or Noah, Daniel would argue with Sean, Claire and Stephen and try to run away. Sean would look for him, scouring Beaver Creek, before realising that Daniel has taken off completely. Sean would eventually find him in the woods, hungry and alone, and the two would reconcile a little. Trekking down to California later, they would have again found work through small farmers and Sean would have worked very hard for very little money. After a while of saving in California, the two would have hit the road again where they would try to push on, trying to hitchhike their way to Mexico. They'd likely purchase some fake IDs near a border town and attempt to immigrate illegally. Sean would probably use his power to steal discreetly to make his life easier. Daniel would be upset and show visible signs of childhood traumas at this point being forced and dragged through this situation. Whether Sean and Daniel would have succeeded in getting to Mexico, well, I'd imagine that's up to you to decide. We don't even know if this will happen in the regular game, so who am I to say if they'd managed to achieve this goal in the alternative timeline? Although I'd imagine that due to the lack of money and guidance from the punks and Karen, Sean would have found himself captured and imprisoned eventually, facing trial for the murder of Officer Matthews. Karen would probably attend the trial, but would be helpless as the stupid justice system ever present through Life of Strange 2 wrongly convicts him. But let me know what you think. I want to hear your guys' opinions of how this would have played out. What other kinds of what-if videos would you like to see next? Do you think they should be longer? Shorter? Do you like these types of videos? 
let me know in the comments down below and I'll be down there responding to all of your comments. So far, this video has been really fun to create and there is a huge difference from simply predicting the next episode. It also means that I can continue to produce Life is Strange 2 content as long as the game is complete. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a like if you did and remember to keep your cucumber serrated and have a nice day. Bye guys.